Hey, this is uh, Colin from AdSign. Today I'm going to run you through how to install uh, SSH no ports on the IP Fire firewall. It's an open source firewall, and you can uh, look at the uh, documentation they put together on ipfire.org. Um, and I'm going to install it from scratch. If you've already got it installed, uh, then you can probably fast forward to the end. But I'm going to start right from the beginning and then get SSH uh, MPD installed and then SSH. NP into the machine. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, boot the machine now. I'm running it on a virtual machine on my Proxmox cl uh, cluster. Uh, so you can see this is uh, IP5 booting. And uh, we can uh, install it and see it says install. So uh, the install doesn't take too long. Uh, we'll run you through it from uh, right from the beginning. Uh, it's really quick. So we are going to use English. Uh, we're going to uh, start the installation. And uh, I'm going to accept those conditions. I actually read it before. But feel free to read through. Uh, I'm going to delete all the data on my disk. In this case, you can see it's a QE and new disk. So uh, that's easy enough. I'm going to use the ext4 file system. Uh, so I'll partition the disk and uh, then install the software on it. This will take a few minutes. First, we'll create a file system and then we'll copy all the files over from the uh, the virtual DVD. So, um, yeah, we're going to be watching that install bar go across for a couple of minutes. Uh, but it didn't take too long. There we go. Installing the system. And... Yeah, almost 100%. There we go. So uh, the system's been installed. And I think it may ask me a couple of questions. Though. It may just go into reboot mode. I can't remember. Here we go. So installing the bootloader. That's uh, pretty important so that the, uh, the disk has got the right stuff. So boot. And there we go. So basically it says reboot. So it's what we're going to do. And then you can go into the web configuration. But what I actually see is it reboots. Uh, we're going to go into uh, a few questions uh, on the uh, on the console here. You know, this would be different if uh, I'm using a PC here or an emulator uh, or a virtual machine. Uh, but if you're installing it on a Raspberry Pi or a a, uh, a different machine, you'll have slightly different things to go through. But um, at this stage, I want to use a US keyboard, and I'm going to pick UTC. There we go, UTC. And this is going to be IP Fire 01. And my local domain is actually uh, .lan, but yours may be different. This is really for DNS type setup. And a password. I'll type that in. And uh, admin password. Now the admin password is for the web interface. So you log in as admin on the web interface and uh, root into the, uh, the underlying Linux machine. And then we got to this network configuration. So we, uh, I've configured up two network ports. Uh, one is a, a green network, uh, a green for good, I guess, and uh, red for the big bad internet. Uh, we can set up you know, many different sort of uh, DMZs, maybe orange and blue. Uh, but I'm just going to go for the basic setup, green and red. So green and red is fine. And now I can set up the uh, the card assignments. So for my green card, I'm going to use the 44 interface. Let me just check that. I'm uh, pretty sure that is correct. IP fire hardware. And yeah, 44 is my local Ethernet interface. So we pick that one for that one. And for, oh, and for the, the wrong button there. And for the red interface, we will pick the, there we are, the D9. Yep, the D9, that's good. All right, perfect. So uh, that's my two interfaces set up. Um, that looks perfect. And we can say done. And now we can set up some um, some addresses for those. 
So for my green side, that's going to set up a static IP address. Uh, 1.14. 14. It's a slash 24, so that is correct. And for my red, you can set up uh, DHCP and all that good stuff. I'm just going to set up a static, which is fine. And my static is going to be 1.14. Then uh, slash 24, and I'm going to set up a gateway which is yeah, effectively a default route, so 2.1 for me. And I think that's that. Uh, and we're done. So you would do, if you've got other networks you set up, uh, like the uh, blue and the orange, then you can set those up as well. But that's essentially it done. And we are done there. Now, if you want to set up a DHCP server on your green network, this is the way to do it. I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, because I've already got a DHCP server on that uh, network, so uh, that's fine. And that's it. That's the setup on the console is done. So what this will do is it will actually uh, re reload the firewall, reboot, and uh, it'll take a couple of seconds just to uh, get the machine up and running. It will create some keys. You'll see the keys being created uh, for SSH and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then we should be able to log into the uh, web UI. And um, the way you get to the web UI is uh, basically by the IP address on the green side of the network. So in my case, uh, 14. Uh, and it's uh, port number 444. So you can see it's rebooted there. Let me just bring a browser window in. And you have to be careful here that it is actually HTTPS. So don't forget the HTTPS. And here's my browser. Let me bring it down here. It's a little big. And you can see here uh, 14 and then port. So it's code on 444. And we should get a login prompt. Yeah. So uh, it's a, um, a not a real certificate on there. I mean, it is doing TLS, but it's not real certificates. You're almost, well, you will get this. Uh, we get this error, but we'll just click over that with advance and then proceed. And then we log in, as I say, with admin. And the password you put in on the uh, console there. And we sign in. And uh, there we are. We have got a uh, IP fire installation. So the next thing we need to do is uh, set up SSH on the, the IP fire. Uh, firewall, and the way you can do that is to go to system and then SSH access, and uh, we uh, we're going to have allow it, and uh, we want agent forwarding because we actually use that underneath the skin. Uh, we allow TCP forwarding, that's fine, and we uh, and I encourage this use public key uh, authentication rather than just firewalls, and um, yeah, I wouldn't click on these things because they'll actually stop the daemon after a while, uh, either 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, but we want to get remote access, so we're going to leave it up. Obviously, we only, only have access uh, on the interfaces we have SSH running on, and uh, you can tune that later uh, just to be listening on local hosts, and you'll still be able to get logged in, but we'll leave it as is for the moment. Uh, with IP file, once you've done this, you do have to hit save. And uh, that's good. So we now have uh, SSH access to the machine, and we can log in because that would be a good thing to do. We just get a terminal window, a new window, and we should be able to SSH into that. And 1.14, which is the green side, and also you have to specify root, and uh, it will say this is a new uh, key, and it should actually match this one here, sort of. You see, uh, there we go. HG, HG. Yeah, that looks looks like the right key. So yeah, we'll say yes. And uh, that's interesting. So we need to specify because I'm my default. Uh, I think is setting up a 
um, setting up a, um, rather it's sending a key rather than just using the, uh, the password. So let me see whether I can fix that. I think there's a SSH setting and uh, we'll be able to log in without that. Yeah, and I think you can just have a preference file if I write. There we go. So we can go here. So you may get your list yourself. So it's sort of interesting that it happened to me. And uh, there we go. That's because my default setup. I was sending a key, and uh, um, I can only log in with a password because there's no key set up on this for me to log into. So uh, it rejected the key and obviously that meant I couldn't get in. But we're using this uh, minus O uh, preferred authentication methods uh, of password, then I can log in. So now I'm logged into that machine, which is good. Um, we do need some extra software to uh, actually run SSH and OFORTS on, uh, on the firewall. And it's probably just easier to add that uh, here in the UI. So let's go back to that. We've got login here on SSH. So let's add that software we need. So you can go to IP fire, then uh, the pack fire, which is a package manager. And uh, the software we need is actually called Tmux. So we can scroll down here and you'll see there's a whole bunch of other packages you can install. Uh, but the one we want is this one, Tmux. And we can just hit the plus button and it will install it. And we hit this green button. Would you like to install it? Yes, we would. It will download it and install it. That's it. And it now says we've got Tmux installed. So go back to this console now and we just type Tmux. And this is the Tmux. So uh, Tmux is a terminal multiplexer, so you can have a single terminal. And um, in that single terminal, you can have multiple panes. That's a whole different thing. Uh, but we actually use that to uh, keep the daemon, uh, the SSH, the SSH NP daemon uh, running in a Tmux session. So if I log out, then uh, the Tmux session will continue on. Uh, so it's pretty useful. And you hit Control B and D, and you're back to your normal session. So next thing to do is add a uh, user. It's never a good practice to run SSH really as root. Um, sort of surprised that it's running as root here, but uh, that's how IP fire rolls. Uh, there are no other users uh, on the IP fire firewall, it's just, uh, just a root user. Um, but what we need to do next is uh, add, add a user. Uh, I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the um, username add sign, but you can use anything you like. And uh, you may have your own username preference. So this is this is uh, how to add a user. Um, you use the uh, user add command uh, minus d. This is for the home directory, and uh, this is the username. And uh, we should be good, I think, with that. I will see. That's it. That should be. And we need to make sure that there's a group. So let's just uh, grab uh, add sign is the name of the user in etc groups. Oh, etc groups, sorry. And yep, there is a user and there is a group. So let's check that we can SU to it. We SU to add sign. This is our new user. And we look at PWD. And we do a ls minus l a, and uh, yeah, that looks good. So we have a home directory. Add sign owns it. This is good. So now we need to make a few directories uh, to uh, receive all these, uh, all these, um, all the software. And I have that here. So I'll have all these in the all the instructions as well in another file. Um, so these are a couple of directories we need to make. And we make those with the uh, mkdir command. 
So you can see there's a, a minus p, which means it makes all the directories down to it. So my home directory dot add sign slash keys and my home directory dot ssh one obviously for add sign stuff and the other one for ssh keys. So uh, that's that. And we should be able to see that they're there with uh, ls one sal. And sure enough, they're there. Now it's always a good practice to actually chmod these um, so that um, other people can't get in. Um, and actually, SSH itself will uh, complain bitterly if uh, and won't actually let you log in if the permissions are wrong. So let's just change those with uh, this command. So this will change that and those directories. So um, only. Uh, uh, only I could see them as uh, at sign. So that should do. And then we look at the ls minus l a. L a. And uh, now you can see those directory permissions. They were uh, sort of pretty open, and now they're just closed for the user at sign. So that's good. Um, we should probably also for SSH touch a file uh, called uh, authorized keys. So uh, this is where SSH keeps the authorized keys of uh, public keys of um, people that can log in. Um, so it's called authorized underscore keys. So we're going to touch a file. And then again, let's chmod it so it has the right permissions. And again, SSH is uh, pretty finicky about that. If you don't get the right permissions on these things, you just won't let you log in. So uh, I think that is everything we need to do there. Um, one of the other things is if you want this um, uh, username to be able to have uh, sudo privilege to be able to su to root, uh, then we have to do some things. So if we look at sudo at the, at the moment, if I have sudo minus s, uh, first of all, it's going to ask for a password. We haven't even set one, so we can't get in. Um, so we need to set a password, and um, we also need to uh, set things up as a uh, uh, set at sign up as a sudoer. So uh, to get back to the root prompt that we were at, we can just uh, hit. Control D, and we can um, edit the sudoers file. So we'll do that first of all. Um, so I'm going to use by. You can use now no, if you like. Personal preference. Uh, and there's a file called etc sudoers, and you just edit out. Uh, where are we? Here we go. So we're going to edit that there. So uh, this is uncomment to allow members of a group sudo to execute any command, which is sort of if you, exactly what you want. So uh, it will probably complain that this is a, um, a unprotected file. But if you do the pling on the end of it, then you can uh, get that out. So that's that's that done, and now. We can uh, add, uh, uh, essentially, add the uh, at sign username to the sudo, and uh, then you should be able to you should be able to sudo it and make sure that works. So I think that is you can. There's probably a command to do it by. Uh, um, let's have a look. Just add a group in Linux. I normally write and do it by hand, but it's probably nicer just to do it uh, this way. I think it's add group sudo and oh, maybe it's group add. Never too sure. Yeah, sudo. Different versions of Linux have different tools, so. Uh, there we go, and we should be able to add a user to that particular group.
Bear with me a second, sorry about this. Yeah. So we can do uh, user mod minus a minus g done this so many times in there there we go and if we yeah just a good measure i guess we can prep for at sign in slash etc slash group And uh, you can see uh, on the sudo line, uh, we have uh, add sign. So we're now part of the sudo group and we are part of the uh, sudo's file. So if we su to, oh, we've got to set the password. So we can do that with password, add sign, and uh, type in a password. And then ask for it again. Password change. Now, if we sudo to add sign, and then we type sudo minus s, we can type in that password. And yeah, we're root via sudo. So, sudo is now working. This is super important. Um, so, the next thing to do uh, as uh, the at sign user, and obviously that could be your username, is to actually download the software for SSH no ports. Um, and if you go to uh, noports.com, let me just show you that. Yeah. Noports.com. In fact, you can just go to docs.noport.com. And we can look at the guides, and uh, we can. There is an installation guide for Linux. This is a little bit different. So uh, we've got the advanced installation guides. We're going to follow that. And we got device installation here. We're going to follow the Tmux installation. Uh, but first, we've got to download the software. So you've got to pick the right platform. So if you're using x86 like I am, uh, then uh, this is probably one for me. So I'm going to copy that link address. Um, it may be different for you, depending on which machines you're using and uh, which uh, CPU architecture. So I'm going to grab that. Um, and we can use curl minus L and uh, put this in. Oh, sorry. Let me just do this. Curl minus L. And then that URL that we just grabbed from the screen and then minus O SSH NP. Uh, Minus is just where you want to output it to, and uh, TGZ. And what they'll do is go out to the website and pick up the code. And we should put it into a, the SSH TGZ directory, which is good. And if we ls now, there it is. So we can use the tar zxvf to SSH NP. Um, TGC, and this will uh, actually de decompress everything and put it into files. So now you can see there's a file structure called SSHNP. CD into that. And we can look at all our files. So that's, that's good. Um, so what next? I think we can just install this software. That's probably a good idea. So uh, we use the S, uh, SU command. Um, in fact, I don't know whether we actually need to do that. We can actually just do dot slash install. And if we do minus minus help, it will give you the help. And uh, yeah, there we go, good. So we want to install the uh, uh, SSH NPD, which is the daemon. 
uh, but we also want to install it in tmux, which so we installed tmux. So it's tmux, and then ssh npd, and uh, we should hit enter there. That's it. It's done. Um, well, you will notice here that there is a, an error saying uh, cron tab not found. And that's because IP Fire actually doesn't use uh, cron and cron tab. It uses thing called uh, fcron. And we'll see that in a minute. It's a little bit different. Um, but we should have uh, should at this stage have all the software in the right place. So uh, let's let's have a look at that first of all. Um, where it installs everything, if we cd back to our main directory, so on the uh, add sign, we cd to dot local uh, slash bin. Uh, this is where all the binaries should be. And uh, yep, sure they are, the SSH MPD. We can actually run that MPD, make sure it runs. And it looks like it runs, let's just scroll up here. You can see this is version uh, 5.2, latest version as of today. Uh, April 29th, 2024. Um, and alongside it is another file called sshnpd.sh. Now this is the file that we uh, are actually going to run inside the tmux. So we actually want to edit that. And uh, you'll want to edit it as well. And uh, put in the, the right, right information. So um, you can see, let me just open this window up a little bit more for you. You can see uh, it's uh, got a few variables to change. So the ad side manager, in my case, and this is where I'm making a call from the client side. Uh, I'm going to use my ad sign, which is C constav. And then the ad sign for this machine, uh, there'll be the underscore device. And in my case, it's SSH underscore one. And then you uh, pick a device name. And my device name is IP Fire 01. I think that's all I need. Yep. Everything else is just uh, just um, as it stands. So you can see that again. It's just a text file. Nothing complicated. You can edit that with the uh, uh, Vi like I am or uh, or Nano. Uh, both are installed actually uh, on uh, IP Fire as default. Um, so that's all good. Um, but uh, we have to install a couple other things as well. So uh, we're going to um, use certificates to uh, access the uh, ad sign infrastructure. And IP Fire as it comes doesn't have uh, the, the base certificates in the right place. So we're going to get a copy of those and uh, we'll put them in the right place. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create a directory for those. Uh, we can use the sd command now. Um, and this is where uh, Dart, which is the programming language that um, uh, SSH MPD is written in, this is one of the directories is going to look for the certificates. So we're going to make that directory with the, SU, uh, the sudo command. I'll type in my password. And then we have a very long command, which basically gets the um, root certificates uh, from the Mozilla website and then copies them into the right place. And again, all this stuff will be uh, in the notes. Um, but this is the command. Essentially, all it is is a curl command and then a move command with the sudo command. And it puts it into uh, that directory and then in a file called ca-bundle.crt. And uh, that's it. We're done with that. The um, next thing we've got to do is uh, I'm going to CD again and in dot add sign uh, keys. At the moment we have no keys and uh, the keys are generated using the uh, uh, activate command. You've probably done those before. You can have a look on the instructions how to do that and it will generate a keys file. Uh, I've already got that keys file ready to go. So I'm just going to copy and paste and see it's not there at the moment. I'm going to get another window and just copy that into place. Um, with this command here. I want another machine, so I'm not going to 
bore you with those details. Uh, I'm just going to force the password instead of the key, and uh, we just did that a minute ago, didn't we? I'm going to send the option to the SSH command. Sorry about the wait, guys. Oh, interesting. And maybe I'll copy it the other way then. So I've got the file on another machine. Um, Ah, oh, I know what it is. My silly. Sorry about that. Um, I've got to do this. There we go. Right, copied it across. Sorry about that. So there's my uh, my Atan keys. Uh, ls minus la, and I'm gonna chmod those. Let me see them if I can help it. Ls minus a. There we go. So everything's in place there. Um, now, obviously, what we really want to do is make sure that um, when this machine reboots, um, it will actually run the uh, SSH MPD daemon inside that tmux. And this is where it gets a little interesting. We have to uh, make sure that uh, we uh, have the at sign username in the fcron allow file. And uh, then you can only add entries into the um, fcron uh, database uh, if you're root so you have to actually install them at root so the way we're going to do that is going to pop back to root with the sudo command and then we're going to vi um, slash etc slash fcron dot allow and we just add a new line and say add sign in here. Obviously, this would be your username if you're picking another username. So that was uh, that was um, that. So that's fcron allow, and then you need to put in this very long command um, into uh, the fcron table. So the way to do that is run fcron minus E. Let me just get that for you. Oh, I don't use fcron very often, so this is uh, a little bit new to me. So fcron tab minus U, use the, obviously the username, add sign, and then minus E is for edit. Actually, if you get rid of the minus E, you'll actually come up with a, a bunch of uh, uh, examples. Until we're going to edit. And this is uh, via in my case. And then you're just going to put a single line in that line, which is um, actually does now use the format of uh, regular, regular cron. So we can put that in here. And essentially, this is the, the magic that uh, at reboot yeah, means when the machine reboots, it will run a TMAC session. Uh, TMAC session will be called SSH MPD. And then it will send some keys. 
and uh, the, the, essentially it's typing for you in that window and it will run the SSH npd.sh that we edited earlier on and uh, everything should everything should work. So we can uh, exit out of that and uh, just for good measure we can um, do the minus L and make sure it's there. So if you wanted to start everything right now um, and make sure everything worked and we might as well do that. Uh, you can actually just run this command here by itself. So uh, we copy this and paste it and uh, we can put the percent at the end of it to make sure it goes into the background. There we go. Ah, now I forgot that I had to run that as root, so that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Let's see what we've got a tmux session in there. Yeah, we have, so let's get out of here. tmux uh, ls, we'll list them, and we can do tmux a minus t ssh npd, and uh, yeah, it's not going to work. That's fine. Uh, oh, I noticed actually there's an error there. So that's interesting. So that, that's an error I'll, I'll tidy up, I think. Yeah, because it's looking for root as the home directory and I'm not, uh, obviously the software is not installed as root. We should be running this as add sign. So we'll go back to add sign and um, we'll run that command as add sign and everything should work. So there's that command again. And tmux, new session, yada, yada, yada. I think that should be fine. Let's give it a go. Tmux A. Oh, there we are. Looks like everything's working. So this is sort of the, the description of what you'll get when everything's working. Let's get up another terminal window. There we go. So let's see whether we can log into it right now and then we'll reboot and make sure we can still log into it. So, um, so SSH NP um there we go so um ip fire 01 is the name of the machine we're going to get into and uh there we go so i've, I've specified the uh uh minus i is the specifying the rsa key that I, what the ssh key that i want to use to get into that machine then minus s will drop that ssh key the public side of that key onto the remote machine and the only other thing i've got to specify in fact i think uh, it maybe just work like this let's give it a go so we're getting a remote username it's good oh you can see that it's spawned up waiting for a sponsor demon so a tunnel session so user session and hey we're in yay We've now got a, uh, a session uh, all the way logged in. Um, so that's good. But if the firewall itself reboots, then what happens? We want to make sure that that cron job uh, gets kicked off. And um, the way we can do that, uh, back in the TMUX session, you hit Control B and then D, if you uh, are not familiar with that. Um, and we can hit Control D. And uh, I think we can just hit Reboot here. And... Uh, We'll watch the console as it reboots. There we go. So we've got the console here. It's definitely rebooting. And we'll watch that. Now, one thing I did notice is when uh, the machine reboots, for some reason, IP Fire doesn't log out your SSH sessions, which is sort of interesting. Um, so the way to get out of an SSH session that's sort of in the hung state is um, press tilde then dot and it will drop you back to the machine you were logged in. Um, so I do that on both those windows. You see the IP files are actually booting now. 
it will take a couple of seconds to boot. There we go, reloading the firewall. And then Fcron will uh, kick in. It doesn't kick in immediately. So you have to give it a, a minute or so just to, uh, I guess, quiesce everything out. And then uh, Fcron will kick in and they'll start up that Tmux job. And then we should be able to log in once, uh, once that's working. So you can see it's up and running in here. If we hit reload here, yeah, we uh, we can look at all this good stuff. Let's have a look at the uh, home. Seems like it's up. Uh, I don't really, oh, there's starting Fcron. Looks like a uh, Fcron's up and running. Let's see whether we can log in just now. Once we've done this once, we don't actually need these things anymore uh, because the keys are in there. I'm, I've got my SSH set up, so uh, automatically send those keys uh, in my SSH um, config file. Um, so I won't need those this time, hopefully. And there we are, we're logged in. Uh, we can LS and uh, do anything you want to do at the command prompt to run all the normal SSH NP commands and still run your IP file. Um, so that's it. I say I'll put together the documentation, uh, but hopefully this can serve as a bit of reference if you uh, if you're looking to install uh, SSH NP on the uh, IP fire fire IP fire firewall. Thanks for watching. Sorry it took a little while. Sorry I made a few mistakes along the way, but um, you can see you can get it working pretty quickly. Uh, much of this may be scriptable in the future. We're working with the IP fire team to uh, put together a package, but for the moment. This works just fine, and if you need to upgrade the SSH uh, uh, NPD daemon, then you can just go the exactly the same route um, as we just did. Just run the install script or install binaries, and it will uh, upgrade everything. Um, so there you go. That was it. Thanks for watching.